Hello, and welcome to Fieldwork Fails. This program is a partnership production between the Florida Museum, Guts and Glory GNV, and the Alachua County Library District, sponsored by the National Endowment for the Arts Big Read. Our next speaker is Allison. Allison hails from San Antonio, Texas, where she learned to catch critters, collect precious plants, and enjoy Mexican food every day. After receiving her master's from Texas State University, she moved to Gainesville to work in a horticulture lab, then found her place doing outreach education. In her spare time, she enjoys baking delicious goodies, popping popcorn for movie nights that she'll probably sleep through, and creating educational science videos in her YouTube channel with her dog. I'm so excited to present the scientist to you tonight. One magical thing about our Fieldwork Fails storytelling series, and I think the reason it's been so popular is because it allows the scientists to be scientists and be that part of who they are, but also to be human beings first. And storytelling really allows people to be their most authentic and brave self, even when it's scary and might feel vulnerable and like you're putting your whole self out there. That's our point. So we always tell our scientists, you don't need a PowerPoint presentation. You don't need data. You don't need research. You don't need a lot of the things that would normally back you up and maybe make you feel legit. You just have to show up and be yourself. Storytelling has a way of doing that for any group, of making us our most human selves. So even when we can't, this is something we say in all of our shows, even when we can't relate to someone's literal experience, we can relate to the humanity, to the emotion in their story, and to some of the details around their experience. So we hope that regardless of whether you came for science or stories or science and stories, that there's something for you tonight. And I think you'll experience a lot of bravery in what our five scientists have to share with you this evening. Thank you so much, Taylor, for that awesome intro. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. When I was an undergrad, I was an environmental studies major and a biology and French minor. Studying abroad was a big part of both the school and my degrees. I had to study abroad in a francophone country and do some sort of environmental research project. So I thought, let's kill two metaphorical birds with one stone. Of the programs offered to me, I could either go to Quebec, Canada in January or Madagascar, and it was an obvious choice. I'm actually part reptile, and if the world dips below 80 degrees, I literally sit in a blanket and cry until my body warms up. I need warm and sun. My dad has anxiety through the roof, and me being in a country across an ocean with limited communication was not his jam. But my mom is the complete opposite. So anyway, I went to Madagascar against my father's wishes, which was very Little Mermaid of me. The trip was fantastic. The first three months, we hung out in Fort Dauphin, which is just a very casual beach city in southern Madagascar. We lived with homestay families, would learn something ecological or cultural in our schoolhouse, and then go on a week-long camping trip to cover the week's lesson in the field. My days were filled with playing hide-and-go-seek with the neighborhood kids, watching a definitely not pirated copy of Terminator in French 15 times in a row, and lessons overlooking the beach or camping under the stars. So after about three months of this utopia, it was time to start a month-long independent study project. We could go anywhere, study anything. It could be science, economics, literature, whatever you wanted. This is my time to shine. This is what I'd been waiting for. Field experience. Let me have it. In our travels, I fell in love with one animal in particular. And no, it's not the ever adorable lemur. I fell in love with the chameleon. Every single time I saw a chameleon, I'd have a full-on Vogue photo shoot. My classmates would beckon me when they saw one. I could spot them driving in our rickety bus in the middle of nowhere. I love them. But you were here for my fieldwork story. So my advisor set, up, set me up at a mining site in Fort Dauphin where I was to use different chameleon species locations as an indicator of ecosystem health. They set me up with one of their local ecology students to help identify chameleons, set up transects, and make sure I didn't die. We would be camping for a week in an area the mining company was saving for conservation. The forest was actually an endangered littoral forest, 
Littoral forests are coastal forest ecosystems with saltwater adapted plants, and I was so pumped to get to do some pretty cool work in such an important dying ecosystem. So at our campsite, we'd eat our breakfast of bread, jam, and a fried egg, map out our transects, and measure the DBH, or diameter at breast height, of every tree along the transect. Then we'd eat lunch, which for me was a huge plate of rice and some manioc, and then take a nap from about noon to eight, which I'm just now realizing is asleep. Then it was time to start walking our transects. The mining company gave us headlamps, a GPS, and some super comfortable bright yellow rain suits. So we were always visible at night. When I say super comfortable, I mean these things are one size fits absolutely no one. The band was pretty tight, but the legs were really baggy. I tripped over them constantly. I'm built like a giraffe, so it's not really that surprising. But I'm so glad I had that awful suit because the last month of my trip was the rainy season. Rainy seasons in Madagascar are a lot of rain. Who would have thunk it? And it's also pretty chilly, my favorite, right? And I only had a single long sleeve shirt with me. So every afternoon when it wasn't raining, I'd put my single long sleeve shirt out to dry, but it wasn't sunny for very long, so my shirt was constantly wet this whole week. My afternoon sleeps involved me staying up, trying to be dry and warm, and keeping ants from biting holes into my tent. They were trying to forge the Twizzlers my mom had somehow shipped to me. So the first night of my field work went pretty great. Chameleons are not that hard to find. You'd think they'd be really blended in with their surroundings, but instead a lot of them would sit on the ends of branches, weighing it down like a Charlie Brown Christmas tree bobble. I'd grab these little buddies in their sleep, note their species, tail and body length, sex, all the while they're turning a darker and darker gray. They were pretty mad at me. Some bit me really hard. And then we'd have a Vogue photo shoot. Luckily, the first night was rain free and we only got lost in our transect in the woods, in the dark, once. The rest of the field work was a little different. <laughs> While finding tons of chameleons, we'd also find ourselves constantly lost. I've never been so lost in my life. Every tree looked the same and every night it rained hard. One night we got lost for hours, which not gonna lie, my dad filled me with so many anxiety ridden stories growing up. Like I was gonna be kidnapped by a man in a clown costume in the woods. I thought I was done for. Luckily, <laughs> I was the only clown there because I'm really challenged when it comes to using a GPS and I was the one that got us lost. We were just finishing the transect and we're just coming out of the woods, legs wobbling over my pant legs, and my hair suddenly became more frazzled than Miss Frizzle. And <sighs> less than 60 feet away from us, I saw the most blinding bolt of lightning. My ears were still ringing 30 minutes later. And that was my near-death experience. <laughs> Another less rainy and less lightningy occasion I was still a soaked mop of a human being, but I found some pretty key species that day. I was pretty excited and I wasn't electrocuted, but I also found a critter or a critter colony that I did not want to find. There I was in that light rain in my really comfy yellow rain suit, casually pushing through plants in an endangered ecosystem in Madagascar when I just started feeling lots of hard pinches. I don't know if anyone's ever had their pants filled with wasps, but it's not fun. Peeling out the band of my comfy yellow rain pants, I see about 10 neon green wasps in my pants. They just climbed up the billowy pant leg and started stinging all over my thighs. And the band was so uncomfortably tight, I couldn't open it long enough to get them out. And taking my pants off in the middle of the woods would have been a struggle. So what do I do? I start pounding my thighs with my fists like a frustrated toddler pounds into a ball of Play-Doh. I had to kill every last one of these neon green wasps, and I love bugs, so this kind of broke my heart. But the worst part is all I got was swelling. I did not get any wasp superpowers. Luckily, my anxious dad made me pack some antihistamines and creams and all the medicinal potions I might need, despite me saying, I won't need anything. 
It's always good to be prepared, even if it means carrying a heavy pack for four months. By the end of the week, it had rained so much, my shirt had never completely dried, and I was tired of those yellow pants, but I was still having a lot of fun. Unfortunately, because it's been raining this entire week and we're in a coastal littoral forest, things got very swampy. I have no idea how much rain occurred over my eight hours sleep between marking my transect and walking my transect, but there was a literal lake that had formed in the middle of my last three transects, making them completely impassable and impossible. I half expected Yoda to come out and speak to me in cryptic riddles. So just as my week went from extremely exciting to kind of a peaceful letdown, my fieldwork fails has kind of followed suit, but wait, there's more. Remember those chameleon Vogue photo shoots I had? Well, thank goodness I had them. Turns out my field hand that my advisors hired to help me only really knew desert chameleons. So when I turned up at the mining company's fauna department with all my identified species, I had to go back through every single one of them and re-identify them. Everything worked out in the end and I had the most amazing field work time. So what did I learn from this experience? Well, one, lightning is dangerous and your hair really does fizzle up. Two, wasps, they can hurt and they do not give you superpowers. Three, I really absolutely do not like the cold and rain and it makes me into a wet noodle with the coordination of a baby giraffe. Four, chameleons are just like us and do not appreciate being woken up, but I still really love them. And five, photograph everything and appreciate every experience. If I could go back right now and almost get struck by lightning and definitely get stung by wasps, I would do it in a heartbeat. <laughs>